I'm in Microsoft Azure and I'm going to be creating a V2 storage. V2 storage gives us some additional abilities that blob storage doesn't give us, such as the ability to create file shares. So in this particular case, I'm going to be creating a V2 storage because in an upcoming video, I want to create a file share. Now I've already got a subscription. So if you don't have one yet, you hit the drop down, you'll be given the option to create one. And under a resource group, same thing, you can create a new resource group. And this just basically allows you to organize your different jobs. There's nothing more uh, deep than that. So I'll click on Win10 Group, which is a group I created just for tests. Now for the storage name, I'm going to call this one V2 Store. Can't have any uppercase or spaces or any weird types of characters. Under the location, choose the location closest to you, so that way you get the fastest speed. The performance standard is going to be cheaper than premium. Under the account kind, I'm going to leave it as V2 because I want to create a file share. And under replication, you've got a few different options here. The cheapest one is going to be locally redundant. You also have zone, geo, read access, and other ones as well. So just pick which one's best for you. If you're not sure which one to do, there's a little I here and it tells you the different types of replication and what they mean. I'll click networking, which is next. Now you have the option for all public endpoints to be able to access this. Of course, they're still going to need things like the keys and the usernames and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so don't worry about security in this particular case. If you want to lock it down specific networks, you can choose selected networks. Now, if you're not sure which way to go, then you can always go back in and change it after it's been created. Next thing you want to look at is routing preference. Determine how to route your traffic as it travels. I'm going to just choose the default Microsoft network and click next. Now we have the option for turning on soft delete for blobs. So if you are going to want to get that back, it sort of creates a recycle bin. So that way you can restore it if you need to, as well as turn on point and time restore for containers. You can do the same for file shares as well as other options here. I'm not going to choose any here, but each one of these has its own uh, description as to what that is. And it adds additional cost when you do it. And that's because it uses more storage. Secure transfer required, always a good idea. Now, if you're using an older computer like Windows XP or older, then you'll have to use 1.1 or 1.0, but those are all cracked. So the best thing to do is to only use newer computers to access this data. And I'm going to choose TLS 1.2, and soon there'll be a TLS 1.3. Allow blob public access is enabled, as I chose earlier. Uh, access tier, I'm going to choose cool because that's going to be less expensive. It's best for backups, that kind of thing. But hot is going to be if you need to access that as fast as possible, and you're going to be accessing it a lot. Under the hierarchical namespace, you can choose enabled if you want, but by default, it's disabled. And that allows you to set up access control lists, uh, such as you would use with Active Directory, things like that. If you want to enable large file shares, you can do that. And this allows you to get up to 100 terabyte file storage. And I'm not going to be using large ones. Uh, that costs a lot more, so I'm just going to leave that. Tables and queues are disabled because we're not choosing that type of option. Now, the tags that you see here, tags are basically for billing. So if you have, say, HR gets one storage and accounting gets another, then you'll want to create uh, tags so that way they get properly billed. Same thing if you're using this for clients, for various different tenants, then you can bill them for that as well. And it shows up in your billing statement. I'll choose Review and Create. I'll just double check. Everything looks the way I want it. Yep, that looks great. And now choose Create. And you can check your progress up here with the little bell. Just click the drop down and it tells you how things are going. And when it's done, it'll let you know. It's all set. You can click on pin to dashboard so that way you can find it a little bit more easily. Uh, and I'm going to click on go to resource. It'll just take me right to my V2 storage. So there it is. So now what I want to do is I want to open this in Explorer. So I can download Azure Explorer if I want as an application to my computer, or I can just choose the Storage Explorer Preview. So I'll click on Storage Explorer Preview, and there's all my information. Now, if you're just creating a blob storage, which is not the type I chose, then you would only see blob containers. But because I created a V2 storage, we also see the file shares, queues, and tables that you can use. So what I want to do next is I want to right-click on blob containers and choose to create a blob container. So I'll just call this V2 blob. 
And again, can't use uppercase characters or anything that's been used before. I don't want to choose anything other than private because private requires the keys and the usernames and all that kind of stuff. So I want to leave private access and I'll click create. And there we go. So I created my container and I've created my blob storage inside the container. Now, if I want to, I can click upload and I can upload something directly from my computer right into the storage. So I'll choose that log file and click upload. And now my log file is uploaded. I can also click download and bring it back down to a computer as well. Now in an upcoming video, I'm going to show how to create a file share and how to map that file share to your Windows Explorer. So that way you can treat it just like any other drive letter. So that's how you create V2 storage in Microsoft Azure storage.